Hi, welcome back to Dr. Donovan Medicine Made Easy. In today's video, we're going to be covering alopecia areata, which is a chronic inflammatory condition affecting the hair follicles, which leads to sudden onset of non-scarring alopecia, which is hair loss where the hair follicles are generally preserved. In the UK, alopecia areata is a relatively common condition and is estimated to affect 15 in 10,000 people. In this video, we're going to be discussing the following. We'll discuss who is affected by alopecia areata. We'll discuss the signs and symptoms associated with the condition. We'll then go on to discuss how it's diagnosed, treatment, prognosis, and then finally, when you should refer the patient to a specialist for further assessment. So first of all, let's start off by discussing who is affected. Well, alopecia areata can present at any age and males and females are affected equally. Any hair bearing skin can be involved, but it most commonly affects the scalp or the beard and less frequently the eyebrows and the eyelashes. Total loss of scalp hair, which is called alopecia totalis, or scalp and body hair, which is called alopecia universalis, is rare. So what are the signs and symptoms of alopecia? Well, most patients have got no symptoms and a bald patch or thinning hair is noted incidentally and is often discovered by a hairdresser. Other patients might describe a burning prickly discomfort in the affected areas and this is known as trichodynia. Now there are different subtypes of alopecia, some of which I've already just mentioned, that we'll go over briefly now. So the most common or most usual type that you might think of is patchy alopecia areata. And this is where patches of alopecia areata can affect any hair bearing area, but most often the scalp, eyebrows, eyelashes and beard. The patchy alopecia areata has got three stages. The first stage is sudden loss of hair. The next is the enlargement of the bald patch or patches. And the third is regrowth of hair. The bald areas may have a smooth surface, which is completely devoid of hair, or with something called scattered exclamation mark hairs. Exclamation mark hairs are two to three millimeters in length. They're broken or tapered with club-shaped roots. Microscopy of these hairs shows a thin proximal shaft and a normal caliber distal shaft. And on screen now, you're seeing pictures of these hallmark exclamation mark hairs. Alopecia totalis affects up to 5% of patients with autoimmune hair loss, and this is where all or nearly all of the scalp hair is lost. Finally, there's alopecia universalis, and that affects less than 1% of cases, and this is essentially where all of the hair all over the body is lost. There are also commonly nail changes, and these are seen in around 10 to 15% of patients with alopecia. The most common nail abnormality is regular pitting and ridging. However, other nail signs can be seen. And because of these clear clinical features, a diagnosis of alopecia areata is typically just done clinically, i.e. once you go to the doctor and they've assessed you, then the doctor can make the diagnosis typically just by that history and examination. So moving on now, just briefly to think about what you need to be doing in terms of assessment of a person with suspected alopecia areata. Well, first of all, you want to take a history of them. And this includes asking questions around how the hair loss is affecting the patient, any known triggers such as emotional or physical stress, as well as their coping strategies and support network. Because remember, alopecia can have a negative psychological impact on the patient. You want to ask them about any previous episodes of hair loss, any current or past treatments, as well as their effectiveness, any family history of hair loss, or any family history of atopy or autoimmune disease. And then you want to ensure you examine the patient, and especially the skin, for signs of scarring or inflammation, which may suggest an alternative diagnosis. So let's move on now and briefly discuss the management of alopecia areata and how it's treated. Well, first of all, you should give advice on the natural history of the condition, as well as offering the patient a range of different treatment options, depending on the severity of the alopecia. The option of no treatment is possible if there's evidence of hair regrowth, or if there's no hair regrowth, but less than 50% hair loss. There is then the option of a three month trial of a potent or very potent topical corticosteroid treatment if there's no hair regrowth or there's more than 50% hair loss. There's also cosmetic options to camouflage hair loss such as hair extensions, dermatography, which is tattooing, as well as things like false eyelashes if the eyelashes are affected. The option to wear headpieces or wigs can be offered if this is appropriate and also the provision of psychological support if it's needed and appropriate. 
So let's just go on now and discuss prognosis of alopecia areata. Well, the prognosis is typically unpredictable. Spontaneous remission within one year may be seen in up to 80% of people with limited patches of hair loss or hair loss of less than one year in duration. So it's important to ask about the time frame that the alopecia has been going on for. In terms of referral, well, referral to a paediatric dermatologist or a dermatologist should be arranged if the person has got hair loss which isn't responding to treatment in primary care or if treatment is declined, if the diagnosis is uncertain or if the patient is a child, pregnant or breastfeeding woman. I hope you found the video useful and informative. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I release new videos twice a week, usually on a Wednesday and a Sunday. If you've got any comments, questions or queries, please leave them in the comments section below and I'll be sure to get back to you. I've also included lots of useful links in the description box of this video, which contain lots more useful and peer-reviewed information. Thanks again for watching and until next time, bye.